Elbow Grease Productions in association with MichaelJacksonInsider.com presents on that a little bit more again a lifetime of knowing her son a lifetime of about knowing sure. you know what she heard well, she about her husband she, and yet in in the three months that uh, Conrad Murray was there they somehow were supposed to know what was going on well, they didn't know their email said he either has this physiological or chemical problem they did know that and they did nothing about it he is deteriorating in front of their own eyes he is losing weight. You saw the picture. They did know it. They didn't do anything about it. The family, they talked to him about it, but they didn't know what was going on. He wasn't having those symptoms. As you heard them all say, he was fine. He wasn't rambling. He wasn't talking to God. He didn't have paranoia. He didn't look emaciated. That he didn't one, have any of those symptoms. That was one night. You don't become like that in one night. It was a progression. Did you not hear the evidence that over eight weeks he deteriorated in front of their eyes? That, that, that is not what you want. No, that was an email that was sent to the tops of AEG to the CEO, Tim Lightwick. This man had deteriorated over eight weeks and they did nothing. His family never saw that. You heard what his mother said. If she had seen all that, she would have taken my deposit. But they didn't do that. They didn't get an independent doctor. They didn't do any of that. They didn't say no rehearsal until you get checked out and come back. They're the only ones that had the power to do that. The family couldn't do that. But what? AEG could. They were in the best position to do it, and they didn't do it. What's your assessment of this jury and an aggressive cross-examination involving a woman? You know, only uh, time will tell. I'm sure the lawyers are proud that, that, that they can aggressively cross-examine an 83-year-old woman, and I hope that that makes them proud that they were able to do that. But certainly people like Mr. Gongor and Mr. Phillips that are working every day and employed by AEG, they weren't able to answer questions. They, they didn't remember hardly anything. There was 80 hours of this is it footage. How come we didn't see anything of Michael being sick or uh, well, messed up or talking to himself or anything in that? Kenny Ortega's testimony, the, the video, the AEG cut it. Kenny Ortega never watched 80 hours. Kenny Ortega watched what they gave him and they cut it down to put Michael in the best light. And the film was never intended to be a replication of what Michael Jackson did in rehearsal. So the evidence clearly establishes that that was not the purpose. And why would AEG put out a film that shows Michael in bad condition when they know it's going to harm them? And you saw the emails where they said to hide certain footage in the vault and to don't put that in the documentary. Can't you subpoena the We're working on that, but we are. So, and we, we don't know. I mean, you know, we don't even know that they gave it all. Remember, Mr. Ortega, no one could say that AEG provided Sony with all the outtakes. How do we know that? So, with the, with the end of Mr. Jackson's testimony, the defense is now up. Your thoughts as you look forward to the next piece? Uh, I look forward to now myself having a chance to cross examine these AEG witnesses and their experts and to show this to the lawyer for the defense. AEG did it. You say you're working on the outtakes uh, for This Is It. Can't you just tell the judge, Your Honor, we want them? No, because they're not in them? the possession of a... Describe a lawyer-created defense. Lawyer-created defense. Here's a contract signed by someone. Here's someone that's working. But a lawyer would say, well, it wasn't signed by another person. That, that lawyer, a technicality, not a reality. That's a lawyer-created defense. Can you tell this me... This is the outtakes, I think. Everything's underway right now, but it really doesn't matter because they never wanted to film him when he 
look bad, and you heard them say, don't put the cameras on them when you look bad. Can so you tell me how... Now? No, we're not, because we saw Mr. Ortega and other potential witnesses. Mr. Vanish, sometimes um, Mrs. Jackson was a little bit frustrated with the questioning that she was getting from Mr. Clinton. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? She was asked the same question over and over. The judge finally said, he asked that question. She tried to answer She tried to be nice to Mr. Clinton. I don't think he tried to be nice to her. But that's not for me to determine if you're trying to do the job. That's for the jury to assess. In, in, in fact, in her deposition, she said that there were some questions that were out of line. I mean, you heard what she said. Do you think that whether her husband beat her or not has anything to do with the death of his son? I, I don't think so, but maybe Mr. Putnam will explain why he asked that question. All right, thank, thank you all you. very thank much. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Putnam, what are you hoping the jury takes away? Hold up! Wait! Hold up! Hold up. Commercial. <laughs> we have to over. What are you hoping the jury takes away from the testimony you heard over the past couple of days? Um, by that you mean testimony of Mrs. Jackson? Mrs. Jackson, yeah. What are you hoping, what are you hoping the jury takes away from Mrs. Jackson's testimony? Well, I think that, uh, well, what, what I hope they take away is the truth of the situation. Um, so she's been here for 12 weeks. Sure. Uh, Mrs. Jackson's uh, been here for the last 12 weeks. They've been putting on their case for 12 weeks. And she was their culminating witness. She's the person that they're ending their case with. And that's what they did with Mrs. Jackson on Friday. Um, and so we had the opportunity to ask her a couple questions. Um, she'll come back later in our defense. We haven't done that yet. Uh, but we were allowed to ask some questions um, about the areas that they asked about on direct as their culminating witness. And what I hope the jury understood that, and I'm sure they did, I think it was pretty plain, is that there are a lot of enormous inconsistencies between what has been being said and what the truth is. And Mrs. Jackson now made that clear. Um, you saw her testify that um, during her son's lifetime, she had reported to the world and to the press that he never had a problem with prescription drugs. Um, you saw her testify that during her son's lifetime, um, she had made statements to the world that it was known that uh, her, husband, that her um, son had gone into rehab. And she also had made that famous statement that she made that we watched, where she said that he uh, had never been, uh, there had never been an attempted intervention by the family. These are things that were said throughout her son's lifetime. Um, and it was said so that the world wouldn't know the truth. However, um, she had to go on to testify to what the actual truth of the situation was. And as we now know, um, Michael Jackson had a long time problem with prescription drugs. So what had been told to the world during his lifetime wasn't true. Uh, we also now know that he went into rehab. So the idea that he hadn't gone into rehab is just not true. And importantly, um, Mrs. Jackson herself was involved in the attempted intervention of her son. And Mrs. Jackson herself had conversations with her son about her concern about um, his use of prescription drugs. And you saw that what she said was that in each of those instances, um, her son's reaction was absolute denial. And in fact, he got really angry with her. He got really angry with his siblings um, at this intervention. He got really angry with her personally when she tried to talk to him about this. And remember, these are years and years apart. I mean, it wasn't like it happened in one instance. And he got very angry. He adamantly denied these things. And as, as you saw, um, the, the intervention wasn't successful. And I think that's the important thing for the jury to take away. Um, Mrs. Jackson has indicated, and we believe it to be true, that no one had a, a closer relationship um, than she did with her son, Michael Jackson. And yet, um, she did everything. She endeavored to ensure the world didn't know about her son's long-time problem with prescription drugs, about who's going to rehab, about uh, the attempted interventions. And as a result, it would be impossible for people outside of his inner circle to know all of these things. And I think that's what the jury has to understand when assessing what actually happened. So what actually happened, in your opinion? Well, I think what happened, we, we can see, um, because she's actually testified. So what happened was a concert company um, was called by Michael Jackson and his representatives. He contacted ABGI 
and wanted to learn about the company and learn about what they did, what their business was and how they did it. Michael Jackson then, after approaching AKG Live, decided that he wanted to go back into the concert business and he wanted to go back into the concert business and work with the concert promoter and producer AEG Live. That was his choice. He asked to do that. He asked to meet with them. Um, they then went about doing the things that he asked to try to help him put together a tour so that he could come back and perform at the O2. And that's what actually occurred here, as we've seen the testimony of, you know, uh, they had little interaction with Michael Jackson in terms of the production and promotion of that. They certainly saw nothing that would indicate that he was having any problems. And that's what the testimony actually showed. In fact, Mrs. Jackson went on to say that she never discussed these issues with any July uh, with, with Paul Gardner, with Randy Mills. She never even discussed with Michael Jackson's or managers, business consultants. Uh, agents. She, she never let them know what was actually happening in Michael Jackson's life because the entire thing here was they kept his private world private as best they could um, and now they would like to blame somebody else for things that only they do privately. And I think that's what the jury's for. AEG yeah. has been, I mean, forgive me, Jackson family's case has, has, has been probably a central question. blame someone else for what happened to this son. And you say, it's understandable she loved it. But you also have to understand that all these facts that come out about what they actually knew and didn't were not able to do anything about. It. And yet she's now looking to blame someone else for the very things that she and her family knew. And, and that's why those questions were asked. What did the nations of Israel have to do with this? And we're asking about that. Well well it's interesting that, that they tried to misuse this, which is really a shame. Um, what happened in as a no doubt no, is that um, after Mr. Jackson's passing, um, we try to figure out what actually happened. And to find out what actually happened, you need to talk to the people who were there, the people who were in his house, the people who were in heroin, because we weren't. Okay? So if we're going to find out what actually happened, we need to talk to the people who were actually there. And a number of people in Mr. Jackson's family, his brothers and sisters, had indicated that it was very difficult to get even a meeting with him, to get to talk to him. And the reason was is because he had created a wall around him, and part of that wall, they said, was created by the Nation of Islam and his security. And so we had asked, who are these people? How can we find them? Um, and that's all that question. cross-examining an 83-year-old woman who's lost a son? Of course. Um, and I would like to believe that I didn't. Um, I, I, I just wanted to know the facts of her. And there was no reason to be aggressive with her. I think everyone would agree I wasn't aggressive with her. Well, I don't think that's necessary. That said, the only aggression we saw um, in the courtroom was by her attorney at her. So he started screaming questions at her and she broke into tears. Um, those, that was not me asking those questions. That was her own. Yes, well, she's aggression coming from her, too. So well, she was I, combative. I, 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 she, she was combative. But listen, I, I think that you can't blame Mrs. Jackson. Um, I think that it's, it's none of us want to find ourselves in a situation um, where we're happy to confront the very public death of our child. I mean, while it's true that she brought this lawsuit, while it's true that she's been deposed many times, um, nonetheless, that doesn't make it an easy situation. She seemed upset accusing you of asking her why did Jackson beat her. Uh, did you ask that question? She, she never asked that. 
No, I mean, she suggested on the stand that you had asked that question. Said that. Oh, you asked said that. that. You, you, sir, you should, I, you should listen to the testimony. I'll address didn't she, that. Didn't, didn't she bring that up <laughs> on the she stand? Didn't bring that up. <laughs> she did. Yes. Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, yeah, she, yes, did. she did. Yes, she did. She brought it up. But did you ask her that question? Sir, I understand that you represent the plaintiffs, and I understand that you take their testimony every day. No, let me ask you. Um, they've indicated that they're done with their days and that we can now move on to our As you've seen, we just called our first person. Um, and so we hope to be fun. And that said, they've also indicated that there might be a couple of people who call, and so we're still looking forward to seeing who that is. But I mean, as you begin your case in chief, what do you want to say as we look now at the new Well, I hope what we're able to do is be able to um, bring all of the various people, okay, who are involved um, in the tour, who can talk about what they actually saw as opposed to all of the speculation that they've sought to draw out of the case in chief. In addition, importantly, as we noted in our opening, what we're also going to do is bring all of the many, many, many doctors um, that Mr. Jackson met with both you know, over the decades before his passing, but also really in just the months prior to his passing, to find out what exactly happened in those very confidential, um, very private conversations that he had with his various doctors, because now that he's passed, that and they put his issue, we're allowed to actually bring that test. So you, will you be putting Michael Jackson on trial? I don't think you can put Michael Jackson on trial. There's, there's no question in anyone's mind, nor should there be, um, that Mr. Jackson had a real money on his back. Addiction is a very serious problem. Uh, excuse and, me, you uh, said addiction, but they say that he was dependent because he had real issues, uh, uh, physical issues that he was trying to deal with, and uh, especially since they didn't find any drugs in his body except for uh, propofol, most of all when he passed. So what do you think? I think that's right. I think that what we've seen is precisely that, that he had gone with various opiates for decades. Um, but we have no indication that they had any role in his passing. And I think that there are a lot of those that might have. Most, of the, most of the pills were full that was in the room, so we don't even know if he had an ongoing yeah, program. Right. Uh, 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 ongoing ongoing uh, problem, but that he did have ongoing pain that he was trying to do. And that's 100% right, and that's important, because what Michael Jackson died, okay, what, what, what has been shown by the coroner, what was shown in the criminal trial, was that Michael Jackson died of an overdose of a drug called propofol that was being given to him by his doctor, behind locked doors, upstairs with security out front. That is what actually killed Michael Jackson. And that is an issue that no one had any idea about except for his doctors. Because he had only ever had the discussions about protocol with his doctors. It was a drug that almost no one here has ever heard of before the passing of Michael Jackson. And therefore, there's absolutely no way that A.E. July or anyone but his doctors could have any idea that he had this problem until he very sadly and very tragically died. Are you planning on bringing uh, Dr. Murray? Um, no, as we indicated, I don't think so. They have the burden of proof. <laughs> That's your answer question. They have the burden of proof in this case, and because they have the burden of proof in this case, I only have to defend against the case they brought, and I don't believe they've met their burden of proof. So there's lots of things that we don't need to do because they haven't managed to prove it. Did I hear you correctly that you plan to call Catholic Jackson back again? Yes. Okay, and then also um, that the they may bring some more things. There seemed to be that indication. Okay. okay. So you're not going to answer the question about the depot? Did you ask her if sir, Joe beat her? Sir, as I'm sure you're probably aware, um, I, I understand I understand you'd like to say you're not, but as you're probably aware, what you have done... I'm not on trial this, here. Uh, I'm asking you a question. She's... Do, do Catherine want, do, Jackson... Would you like me to finish the yes, answer? Yes, sir. Please, are you, as we've noted, uninterested in the answers? You just want to do what the plaintiffs have to say. Would you like me to actually give you the answer, please, sir? Please, The thing about depositions yeah. were that they are confidential. Okay? What occurred in those depositions was confidential at Mrs. Jackson's request. Therefore, I am not at liberty to go into the private matters that went into in that deposition. But she, on the stand mentioned today, it. mentioned it. She accused you of asking for yes. that in deposition. Yes, she did. And what's your response to that? I'm not, I'm not going to go into what went into about the very tragic history Michael Jackson had with his parents and father over the period of his life. That is something that we did not go into on the stand because it's not... So it won't come up in the trial? That's my knowledge. Beyond I mean, her statement. I mean, 
her attorneys have tried to bring it up, like they've tried to bring up a lot of things that are inappropriate in this trial, but I'm not bringing it up. Okay. Thousands believe Tupac did it. Millions believed Elvis did it. But did Michael Jackson really do it? E-movie book, Suicide. Did Michael Jackson fake his death to save his life? By author Pearl Jr. It's the most shocking true story of our lifetime. Order yours today. Go to MichaelJacksonSuicide.com. That's MichaelJacksonSuicide.com. <laughs>